Doc Nanakomia has uh, put out a lot of uh, erroneous matters which have to be straightened. Mm. First of all, in this country, <coughs> sovereignty resides in the people. Sovereignty does not reside in the Supreme Court of Ghana. Article 1, the very first article of our Constitution, is very, very clear. Article 1 of the Constitution provides the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana in whose name and for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised in the manner and within the limits laid down in this constitution. Very clear. So let us all accept that. Sovereignty resides in the people. Sovereignty does not reside in the Supreme Court. I thought second that Anna was making second has to do with the supremacy of the constitution. Second, the fact that the Supreme Court is clothed with the jurisdiction second separate the constitution. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that and, 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 and I think that and I think that mm -hmm. and I think that on the supremacy point, Bagbin was most profound. Yes. If you read paragraph eighteen of his statement. Yes. He said, I believe in the supremacy of the constitution. True. Mark my words. The supremacy of the Constitution, yes. not the supremacy of the judiciary or Supreme Court, unquote. Yes. Continues at paragraph 19. Mm. A parliament that understands, reflects, and embodies the will of the people and defends its constitutional prerogatives only works in the interest of Ghana and Ghanaians. Not a rubber stamp parliament, mm. subservient to the whims and caprices of the executive, and or the judiciary. Mm. So I, I, these points, I mean, I these points have to be made very question. clear. You can write your question down. That, now, now let me come to let me come to let me come to that let me come to the who the, the, who the, the you, are about, you are talking about you are talking about unruliness. Please, so please, please take don't notes don't take notes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Now, this selectivity that Nana Komia exhibits about unruliness. Mm -hmm. The unruliness in this whole debacle mm. started from the MPP side. Mm -hmm. Never in the history of the Ghanaian parliament has any side of the house or any member of parliament sought to stop the speaker. You are aware that the unruliness started when Afenyo Makin and the MPP side decided to even prevent the speaker from delivering his ruling mm. on the Honorable Atufosin's application. Can you believe that? This has never happened in our history. That's where the unruliness began. If he's interested in unruliness, and he wants a debate on unruliness, that's where he started. <laughs> That is where the unruliness started. Look, I have all the answers on this matter here. 7th of November 2020, Speaker Okwe, nobody got in his way, attempted to stop him from declaring the formula seat vacant. It's here, the answer is here. The answer of 26 March 2023, when the seat of Abraham Kofi Asante was declared vacant. The answer is here. Nobody got in the way of the speaker. I have another answer here of 2nd March 2006 when Professor Wayone Saley's seat was declared vacant. Nobody got in the way of the speaker. Through all kinds of shenanigans. That's where the unruliness began. Now, Doc, more unruliness. Let me read this statement, actually a letter signed by the Deputy Clerk of Parliament, Ebenezer Ahuma Jetro, on the authority of the Speaker, dated 18th October 2024. I'll show Nana more unruliness. And this is addressed to the Registrar, Supreme Court, Accra. Dear Registrar, read. Read to invoke the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, pursuant to Articles 1, 12, 1, and 12, 17 
21-1-B, E, 35-1, and 5, 55, 97-1-G, 138, 296, and B, of the 1992 Constitution, of Rule 45, of the Supreme Court Rules, 1996, CI 16. I am directed by the Right Honorable Aban Sumana Kings for Bagbe, Speaker of Parliament, to return the attached processes which was left at the Legal Services Office of the Parliamentary Service by three bailiffs of the court on Wednesday, 16th October, 2024. Attempts were made to serve the same processes on Tuesday, 15th October, 2024. The Right Honorable Speaker notes that the attempted service is contrary to Article 117 of the 1992 Constitution and the circular issued by her ladyship Justice Sarah Pamela C.A. Cronton, J.A., the Judicial Secretary, and copy to the Honorable Lady Chief Justice with reference numbers SCR9, entitled, quote, Enforcement of Articles 117 and 118 of the Constitution, Immunity from Service of Process and Arrest, unquote, dated 12 July 2024, addressed to all registrars of courts. Consequently, the Right Honorable Speaker has directed return of the attached processes for your necessary action. Signed, Ebenezer Ahuma Jetro, Deputy Clerk. You see the litany of unruliness. Another Komiya is inviting us to discuss unruliness. The litany. It didn't start yesterday. Even the Supreme Court. First one to Article 117. You sit with the Speaker of Parliament. How should services be received? You all agree that it should be done on Mondays. You issue a secular current chief justice. Because of political expediency, you are in a hurry to save the MPP government. In an indecent haste, you defy your own practice rules, which you signed, copied parliament, Issue to all the courts. The unruliness. So unruliness. It didn't start yesterday. Now look. This baseless attack on the speaker. Where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? No speaker of parliament comes to parliament very early. Constitute themselves into ushers and then directs people where they sit. Nothing stopped the MPP MPs from coming to Parliament, particularly when they triggered this recall, to raise whatever concern they have. So the attack on Speaker Bagby, where is it coming from? It's totally baseless, it's totally unfair. Speaker Bagby didn't meet us and tell us where to sit. He does not direct who sits where. He does not. He totally does not. Then Nana Komiya again tries to engage in sanctimonious piety. That day, they are adherents of Supreme Court decisions. They, they believe in the rule of law. Really? So he's never seen. He's never seen any, anybody disregard he's the never Supreme seen. Court. Wow! Mm. Never seen. Mm. I pray Dom Levo is watching. What did the Supreme Court say about Dom Levo's dismissal? Has Dom Levo been compensated? What did President Kufuado do? Has Dom Levo been compensated for that wrongful dismissal? Dom Levo, what he was put through, was it fair? What did the Supreme Court say about that? Let's come to Ayawa So West Wagon. What does Article 279 of the Constitution say? Article 279 is very clear. Commissions of inquiry are high courts. They have the powers of a high court. Why did they throw the recommendations away? When are they going to compensate the victims of the Ayawa So West Wagon violence? When? You should spare us. You should spare us this, 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 this thing. You should spare us. They should just spare us. Look, Speaker Bagbin could not have put it better. Paragraph 19. 
A parliament that understands, reflects, and embodies the will of the people and defends the con- its constitutional prerogatives only works in the interest of Ghana and Ghanaians. Not a rubber stamp parliament, subservient to the whims and caprices of the executive and all the judiciary. I am so proud that I am standing up to judicial tyranny. I'm so proud. Again, paragraph 10, so profound. Ladies and gentlemen, recent acts of the judiciary and the executive interference in the workings of parliament. And look, let's not take these matters lightly. It is for good reason mm, that Article 115 Mm -hmm. of the 1992 Constitution, for good reason, else parliament will be a total waste of everybody's time. There will be no democracy. Article 115 provides that there shall be freedom of speech, debate, and proceedings in parliament. And that freedom shall not be impeached or questioned in any court or place out of parliament. There is good reason. And there are many decided cases to for an attorney general and the rest. Long-standing Jurisprudence has been that the courts are hesitant. They don't like to get involved. They stay away. So that separation of powers will be respected. So that it does not appear that one arm is colluding with the other to undermine parliament. So when Bagby says, quote, ladies and gentlemen, recent acts of the judiciary and the executive interference in the workings of parliament pose a direct challenge to the essence, jurisdiction, authority, powers, and functioning of the esteemed institution of parliament, which is the repository of the sovereign will of the people of Ghana. It is becoming increasingly clear the judiciary and the executive are colluding to weaken parliament. Are we not in this country? What was the conduct of the executive and the judiciary on the LGBTQ bill? President doesn't want to he doesn't want to sign. He will not assent to it. And so let it go to the Supreme Court. And then no agency. You waste everybody's time. So that the can is kicked on a matter that over ninety percent of Ghanaians want to see action on. The executive colludes with the judiciary. No action. The president gets what he wants. In my own e levy case, what happened at the Supreme Court? I never knew that injunctions could be granted so quickly. As we speak, the matter has not been determined. More than two years. It has not been determined. And they say the window of opportunity they've given us is that the government should keep records. Everybody paying the e levy should keep records. So that in the event that they rule in our favor, then they can refund the money. This wasteful government, a government that can dig a pit for $58 million, you think we'll ever get our money back? Don't tell us that they've dug pits with it. They've given it to the sky train criminals who run away with our $2.5 million. They've given it to the Pualugu gang, which blew our $12 million. And we have nothing to show for it. That's what they'll tell us. So, everybody can see what is at play. And finally, as Speaker Bagbin said on this matter, which is to me the fundamental issue, fundamental issue, he said, look, why didn't we see all of this hue and cry? When Professor Okwe gave the same ruling, I am clear in my mind that if the declaration of these seats vacant, did not have any bearing on who becomes majority minority. We would not see what this. We would not see all of this. All of this charade in the name of we want constitutional interpretation would not have happened. The only reason why we are where we are, why everything should not matter, should be suspended, the speaker's authority should be undermined. You say that, oh, why are you not respecting the judiciary? Why should the speaker not be respected? 
Why was even the speakers right to deliver a ruling on this matter? Why were there efforts to thwart that, to undermine his authority, to disrespect him? Put yourself in the shoes of the speaker. If you are Speaker Badbin, will you tolerate all the things that have happened? 